You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. Hello and welcome to The Herbalist Path, a podcast where you'll discover how to make your own herbal remedies at home so that you can take better care of yourself, better care of your family, and better care of our planet. I'm Mel. I'm a clinical herbalist, environmental educator, and mountain living mama with this crazy passion for teaching more mamas and their little loves how to use plants as medicine in a safe, effective, and tasty way so that there can be an herbalist in every home again. It's an absolute honor to have you on the journey down the herbalist path with me so that together we can make herbalism Hashtag spread like wildflowers. Hello, and thank you for tuning in to another episode here on the Herbalist Path. I wanted to come on to this episode because last night, inside of Apothecary Mamas, I had my good friend, brilliant herbalist, nurse, holistic healthcare practitioner extraordinaire from birth to death. And gosh, if we could say beyond, I certainly would. But anyways, it was Heather Shelton. And I did a podcast episode with her recently, which I'll link to in the show notes because she is totally worth listening to. But anyways, last night she came into the Apothecary Mamas group and she taught a whole class on postpartum care for mama. And of course she dove into stuff for baby too. And it was just so darn good. She definitely covered so much more than just the herbs, which was really, really great. But really, it brought me to this place where I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't even really talked much about herbs and pregnancy and um, postpartum times or anything here on the podcast. So I figured I would come in and do that. And so that here I am. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> and before I get into it, I do have to talk uh, a little bit about safety and just general precautionary measures for herbs and pregnancy and infancy. Obviously, it is a very, very delicate time in life and the creation of life. And there are so many factors that go into a healthy pregnancy and a successful pregnancy. So I do encourage 
encourage you to use caution with any herbs and for that matter, matter, like any pharmaceuticals or over the counter drugs as well. In fact, you could like do the just kind of the way the risk versus benefit with those kinds of things and know that just because it has been approved by the FDA does not mean that it is the best thing for you during pregnancy. And when it comes to herbs, which of course we know are usually not like FDA approved because they don't really want us to know how wonderful plants are for healing our bodies because we are not paying them enough to know that kind of stuff. Anyways, aside from that, um, what I do want to say about herbs and pregnancy is just to be on the cautionary side and um, maybe consider avoiding herbs during that first trimester when it is such a delicate time in pregnancy. Sometimes you are going to need them for medical reasons. Maybe you're experiencing extreme nausea and you might want to turn to a little bit of ginger or a little bit of peppermint to help you out in those departments. Um, there is a time and a place. I'm just saying be very careful. Um, and yeah, I think that's enough. I think you get the gist, right? <laughs> Not all herbs are safe for everybody. They react differently to each person. And with pregnancy, you can start at a very, 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 very low dose and, um, move on from there. And obviously, you know, do your research and make sure the herbs are generally regarded as safe research and pregnancy herbs can be really challenging. It's part of why I have Apothecary Mamas as a men membership, just so mamas can have their questions answered by me in, in much greater depth. Okay. All that said, let's dive into the three main things that I think about when it comes to herbal blends for pregnant and postpartum mamas and their little babies. So, um, you know, no that <laughs> the three main things are nourishment, nervous system support, and a flavor. And I'll get into why for each one and suggest some herbs for each one. And of course, you need to consider the safety aspects I just talked about. But from here on, know that the herbs I'm talking about are grass or generally regarded as safe. So along with like health and in, in, um pregnancy, obviously your diet and exercise and adequate sleep and emotional support and all of these things create this whole big picture to create the most amazing human you've ever made. <laughs> so um, knowing those factors, herbs can also be a fantastic ally. So the first thing I like to think about in pregnancy blends, like when I ran my herbal products company, I had three teas and they were mommy to be. Well, I had way more than three teas, but three for moms specifically. I had mommy to be, I had a peaceful baby tea, and I had the milk ladies tea. And so I named the milk ladies, just a little side note, my mom, um, when she, well, she's my mom, so, <laughs> but she's also short with dark hair and dark eyes and dark skin. And I am not short and used to have light hair, but it's gotten darker in my older age and lighter colored eyes and lighter colored skin. So she always said that I came from the milk lady instead of the milkman. <laughs> Silly little joke, but that is where that tea got its name from. And it was obviously for promoting milk flow and calming and soothing of mama's nerves and a baby's nerves and nourishing mama and baby. So back to the nourishment bit here. Um, it's so important, right? Because it takes a lot of work to actually build a human being and simultaneously allow yourself as a human being to continue functioning properly, right? That is a whole lot of nourishment that is necessary. So some of my favorite herbs in that department to nourish a pregnant mama, number one would be nettles. And nettles is one one of our most nourishing plants 
out there. It is absolutely fantastic. And I am talking about the stinging nettles that so many people fear, even though it's one of the best plants um, that darn near every human should be taking in on a regular basis. So anyways, nettles are loaded with calcium. They've got a ton of chromium. They've got lots of iron. So if you are dealing with iron deficiency or anemia in pregnancy, nettles can be a fantastic ally for you. They are loaded with magnesium and potassium and phosphorus and selenium and zinc and protein, chlorophyll. Like if you've ever eaten a raw nettle leaf straight from the plant, like I'm about to do as soon as they start popping up in my neck of the woods. It tastes so delicious, so fresh. And I never in my life imagined that I could say I taste chlorophyll, but I sure as heck can taste the flavor of chlorophyll in the nettles. And it just like you chew every little bite and you're like, holy moly, I am nourishing my body to infinity and beyond. (laughs) Okay, maybe I'm a little excessive about it, but I just get so giddy during metal season and when I get to harvest those plants and the relationship I have with it is really fantastic. So um, nettles for sure. They're also loaded with vitamin C and K, um, a lot of the B vitamins, all the good stuff. And then it's also fantastic just to kind of generally support the immune system, support healthy digestion, ease inflammation. If you are dealing with swelling due to edema or, oh, sorry about that, swelling or edema or anything along those lines. I wonder if I can get that edited out or if it's going to stay there. I don't know. Um, On that note, nettles are amazing. Also, if you are somebody who is dealing with like those cankles you get in pregnancy or you've got swollen eyes, your face is swollen, your hands are swollen, it's all that water retention or edema. Nettles are what's called a diuretic herb and they will promote promote the flow of urine and help you release a lot of that water. So they can be super duper beneficial. I love them, love them, love them in all of the ways. Another herb that I love and plant that is just about to start popping like it's hot in grand abundance all over the world would be dandelion. The leaves are super duper nutritious. They are also loaded with calcium and choline, which is great for that baby brain development, loaded with iron and fiber and magnesium and potassium, protein, um, beta carotene, your vitamins A, C, D, K. It's got lots and lots of antioxidants in there for your body. The dandelion leaves are going to support optimal liver function. They are amazing for digestive health as well. They're loaded with with uh, bitters properties to just get the digestive secretions flowing through the body and optimizing that whole process, which can be really, really nice in pregnancy as well. They're also diuretic like nettles, so can be helpful in the event that you are dealing with those swollen ankles and having that dose of misery from that happening in life. So Yeah, dandelion leaves, toss them in your salads. You could do a tea with them, but they're just delightful in a salad. Um, And at the end of this episode, I'll share a tea recipe I like to make for pregnant mamas often. So then the other herb that I highly recommend for pregnant mamas is um, for most pregnant mamas. When I say that, it's not always for everybody. Um, Red raspberry leaf. Yeah, it's another nutrient dense one. I know that its biggest claim to fame in the world is fantastic because it tones and strengthens the uterus and will help to prep mama and baby for labor so that everybody's ready. It's also going to help to repair and heal the uterus after labor and get mama back to a more toned um, state in the uterine um in the uterus. (laughs) Sorry. Um, And then 
it's also nutrient dense. Red raspberry leaf has a ton of iron. So again, if you are dealing with iron deficiency or anemia in pregnancy, red raspberry leaf can be a great ally. It's loaded with calcium and magnesium and vitamins A and C and E, and it can just be a really, really magnificent helper throughout your pregnancy and postpartum times. So when I made my mommy to be tea, that's something that I recommend moms continued to drink all the way two years postpartum and beyond. Of course, you could drink it now if you aren't pregnant too, Um, but it is specifically formulated to be safe for mamas. (laughs) So those are some of my favorites in regards to herbs for nourishment, general overall nourishment for a pregnant mama and her baby. And they are amazing. Also great for the postpartum nourishment, especially if you're breastfeeding, because that takes a lot of energy and a lot of work and a lot of nutrition from the body. And then those nourishing herbs are then going to be transferred into your beautiful baby, giving them more nutritional benefits as well. So the other thing that is so important in this whole game is nervous system support. Because if you have ever made a human or if you have ever raised a human, then you certainly know that it's not easy. And it can be very, very stressful and challenging. And we need to support our nerves during this time as much as possible. I mean, even without being pregnant or raising a human, life is stressful, right? We all need that support. But mamas in particular, because they are like superheroes doing the most amazing work any human can possibly do. So one of my favorites here in this department are milky oat tops. And actually, you could do the milky oat straw in a tea, or not the milky oat straw, oat straw in a tea also, and that would be incredibly nourishing nourishing for mama. And the same plant creates the milky oat tops, which if you squeeze the like seed pod of these oat plants, there's for about a week long window, there's these milky little substance that will come out of those pods. And that's where some of the most amazing and supportive, gentle, yet strong medicine comes from this plant that is specific for supporting the nervous system. And it is absolutely wonderful. And um, it's something that you ideally are able to get in a tinctured form or some other kind of form where it has been preserved at that milky stage or the benefits for the nervous system are not as beneficial. Um, You will still get plenty of nourishment though. But yeah, um, there's a short window of time to harvest those, get to know and love your local organic farmers or order in bulk from somebody who does that kind of work. Another one that I love so much is lemon balm and lemon balm happifies my soul in all of the ways. Its Latin name is Melissa officinalis and it is an herb that I recommend and gentle, low doses because you don't need a lot. It's also known as nature's sunshine. It will help to uplift the spirits and just make you feel generally um, happy. It's often something that I recommend to people that are dealing with seasonal affective disorder. And since, you know, we're talking about pregnant moms, we don't need a lot, a little bit of lemon balm in a tea, preferably a relatively fresher dried lemon balm. So maybe in the last six months, definitely last year, we'll have the most aromatic benefits and the greatest benefits for the nervous system. And then another one I love oh so much is... um, So another herb that is so important during uh, pregnancy to just 
calm and soothe the nerves and for postpartum times. It's really nice for colicky babies and just stressed out mamas and stressed out babies because that is a traumatic time for them as well. You know, they've been cozy in your womb for so long and suddenly now they're out in this big world and there's people all over shoving them in these weird car seats and taking them to stores with too many lights and so much noise and, you know, all the commotion of our world. Think of that, like going from such a safe, cozy little space in the womb to like, ta-da, here's life, kiddo. Anyways, um, one of my favorite other herbs for nervous system support here is chamomile. And chamomile is something that absolutely happifies my soul in all the ways. It's one of my daughter's absolute favorites as well. It is specific for um, not only being a nervine herb to calm and soothe the nerves, but it's great for tummy upset. So if somebody is gassy or bloated or you've got that colicky baby, chamomile is going to be a really fantastic ally for you. And it's really tasty and delicious. I feel like it tastes kind of like, um, just kind of like apples, like delicious, delicious apples, soft, gentle, loving apples. If you feel that way too, let me know. I would love to hear because not everybody does feel that way, but I for sure do. So yeah, now we've talked about nourishment. We have talked about nervous system support. And then this is it. This is what is so important. Flavor. Have you ever been pregnant and just wanted something and then everything that you're allowed to have just tastes like crap and you don't get to enjoy any of the good things? That's miserable. It's so unfun. So I think that it is really, really important to make mama teas that taste delightful something that they can actually enjoy. And some of the herbs that I turn to to do that are one, yeah, um, chamomile can really help there. Lemon balm can be a great helper there. You could use a little bit of peppermint, um, definitely super sparingly in your blends. That would be nice and refreshing, especially on those hotter summer days when you're like pregnant and it's 95 degrees and you're miserable. Um, a little bit of peppermint in your otherwise nourishing, calming tea could be really nice. If Did I say ginger yet? Because if I didn't, I meant to talk about ginger. And here's ginger a little bit more because I obviously didn't go in depth enough. Um, <laughs> can you tell I don't script my podcasts? <laughs> Anyways, ginger is another one that can add a little bit of good flavor in there. It's also going to be helpful for mamas that are dealing with nausea. It's amazing for tummy upset. The heat, if you do too much of it, could certainly aggravate a baby if you're breastfeeding and taking a lot of ginger in. So I would use caution there and definitely consider lowering your ginger intake or see what else you could use in replace of ginger. Um, but Ginger as a whole is phenomenal for gut health and it's very supportive for the immune system. And I think it tastes delicious. If it's the colder winter months, it's going to do a lot of good work to warm up a mama if she's like super duper cold and just improve overall circulation throughout the body. So pumping blood to those extremities and to the toes and things along those lines, it's going to be really, really helpful. And just a little bit will go a long way to add some flavor to your teas. And then how about a little bit of fennel? Not too much, just a little, enough to sweeten a nice tea and give it a nice little flavor. Also a great one for tummy upset if you're dealing with any of that. Fennel can also increase iron and all kinds of yummy things for you and your tea blends. And speaking of tea blends, I figured I would share a little recipe that I like to create for my mama friends when they are pregnant. And it consists of a lot of the herbs I just talked about. So you would do two parts of red raspberry leaf to really do that nourishing work of strengthening and toning the uterus. 
a little nettle leaf, one part of that, one part of oat straw. So we're really building in those vitamins and minerals into this blend. And then I would go with half a part of alfalfa, another grass generally regarded as safe and nourishing herb for pregnancy and lemon balm just to keep those nerves nice and calm and soothed. You could do about a quarter part of rose hips and a quarter part of peppermint in there for the extra little flavor kick. Um, This would be really, really nice. If you are a mama who's dealing with a lot of stress going on right now in your pregnancy, I might consider adding some Um, some chamomile in there. And then you just use about a teaspoon to maybe two teaspoons in your tea, your eight ounce cup of water and let it steep covered, preferably. You could also do more of that to increase the nourishment in there and steep it overnight and then sip two to four cups a day and delight. You could put it on ice in the summertime. You could sweeten it with some honey or some maple syrup or something along those lines. And just as you're drinking this special, special tea or making this special tea for somebody, make sure that you make it with tons of love and intention. And when you are drinking it, Remember that you are drinking in love, love for you, love for your baby, love for your whole body and the incredibly powerful things that it is doing. You deserve a billion hugs of love and amazing things. And I'm proud of you. I know that you can do this. It's an amazing, amazing feeling. And yeah, if you decide to try this tea recipe, please let me know how you like it. Reach out to me. You can reach out to me via email or you can um, you can hit me up on Instagram at the Herbalist Path or TikTok, wherever you like. And again, remember that, yes, I talked about a lot of these herbs, but not all herbs are safe for everybody. So please, please, please do you. Uh, discretion in your choices with herbs and take into consideration all of the many things there are to take in about you, your pregnancy, your health, your baby's health, and all potential risks and or contraindications. So um, working with a healthcare practitioner who is knowledgeable about herbs is really helpful in that department. And if ever you decide you want more support in knowing what herbs are safe for you, what herbs are safe for your kiddos, those kinds of things, we definitely cover so much of that inside of Apothecary Mama in all of the lessons. And then we do live Q and A's. If ever you're just like, nope, I need to, I need to know this now, or I need to know this specific situation. What would you do, Mel? And I answer those live, but you don't have to be there live. When you're a member in there, you get to have access to all of the previous live recordings and all of the mini lessons from pregnancy to emptying the nest. It's a wonderful, wonderful community of mamas. And of course, you're welcome there. And again, Thanks so much for tuning into another episode on the Herbalist Path. I hope it has been fun for you like it has been for me. And if it has, please do me a huge favor. Leave me a review on iTunes if that's where you or wherever Apple podcasts are or wherever you listen to podcasts and share this with friends that you think need to know. Thank you so much again and have yourself the most amazing day. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of The Herbalist Path. Being on this journey with you is absolutely incredible. If you dig this episode, please leave me a review on your favorite podcast player and share it with your friends so that together 
We can make herbalism, hashtag spread like wildflowers. On another note, I must mention that while I know you're getting some good info here, it's important to remember that this podcast is purely for entertainment and educational purposes and is not intended to be a substitute for medical treatment. While the information in this podcast is absolutely relevant, herbs work differently for each person and each condition. That's why I recommend you work with a qualified practitioner, whether that be another herbalist, a naturopath, or your doctor. So thank you again. I am truly Truly honored that you're tuning into these episodes and on the path with me to make sure that there's an herbalist in every home again. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends so that we can make herbalism. Hashtag spread like wildflowers. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the Ella Campaign to the Comfrey and the Arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.